I pray for everyone, including me, that heavens will not depart from us. Grace of God will not depart from you. In the name of Jesus. I want to welcome you to our eight years of the Cross Prison Center. I remember, I have a question in my heart concerning this. But the Lord said to me, who is the owner of the church? And I said to him, you are the one. He said, who is the one that called? I said to him, you are the one. And he said, why do you have a question in your heart? You cannot give to yourself what I have not given to you. So I retire and I say we should celebrate him. Then in the course of that celebration, the Lord said to me that we have entered into our season of a new beginning. Can somebody shout, I enter into my season of a new beginning? Shout it very loud and clear. And to the glory of God, I travel after Wednesday service. I traveled to Ndo State. And I came back yesterday. Then, when I was there, I had something I was asking God. And then before yesterday, the Lord do it. Hallelujah. Lord said to me, from today, Anytime we are celebrating our anniversary, convention anniversary, we are not going to address to it as anniversary. We're going to be addressing to it as altar. Shout out hallelujah. So by the grace of God, anytime we are celebrating our convention, it's going to be altar that year. Can you shout hallelujah? So please let that thing still be displayed. So I want to welcome you to altar 2018. The Lord said to me that he's taking every church back to the place of altar. Place of altar is a place where the presence of God dwells. Where you can seize something and where you can start activities before it comes to physical sense. A place to seek the face of God without disturbance. Altars start from you because the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. I want everyone to read that scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Know ye not that your body, or know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the spirit of God dwell in you. Say, I'm the temple of God. I carry potent halter in me. So I can freely assess the presence of God without any issue. I can assess the presence of God without any problem. I can assess the presence of God without any issue. Say because I am the temple of God. And I carry the presence of God. So anywhere you go from today, you are different from what people see around you. Is somebody shouting hey man to that? Yeah. Anywhere you go, you don't need to force yourself to be attracted to the presence of God. You carry the presence. And there is nothing that can stand against you anymore. Hear this, until when you understand your making, you will not understand what you are supposed to do. There are lots of people that carry their body to the temple of the idol. Anytime you enter into a house that idols do, eh, all you need to do is say, I carry the presence of God. Every idol is here. Fade away. But hear this. You must be holy. One of the things that will make the altar in you to be active is holiness. Is somebody hearing that? Say it's what? Is holiness. So if you are holy, then you can enter into the presence of God. Altar is a place of power. First King chapter 18, verse 20. Speak 
expressly about that. The book of 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 20, 30 says, 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 30 says, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. That altar where he said that they must meet and they must sacrifice, the people thought it was a altar for the idol. They cut their own self from morning to night. Until when he asked them, are you tired of calling your God? Maybe your God is sleeping. And he said, I don't need to import anything just the way you have imported. I will only call on the God that answered by fire. Here it is before they make their league, he said, the Lord that answered by fire is going to be the Lord that we, we all worship on this mountain. And it works for him. I pray for somebody today. That God that answered by fire. That God will attend to you in the name of Jesus. Can your amen be louder? Say my God that answered by fire. We attend to me in the name of Jesus. Can you say it again? Say my God that answered by fire. Will not leave me to myself. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear you shout say I believe in God. The answered by fire. Say so therefore. I stand on him. Shout out a amen. Can your amen be louder? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen today the Lord said to me. Concerning a lot of people. You say you have been saying I don't have what it takes to have. But he's saying, I should tell you that he's going to release to you the grace for more than enough. Amen. If you believe that, I want your amen to be louder. Amen. What to have now might not be enough. But in this season of a new beginning, grace for more than enough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord said to me that my people will bring in much. Oh, maybe you don't understand. If you go out empty, you are bringing in much. You are bringing in much. If you always bring in it little, you are bringing in much. In the name of Jesus. Lord said to me, I will say to everyone that walk with a plain mind on this mountain. Anyone that is walking on this mountain with their plain mind, he said, I will say to them. So, because I do that, I receive settlement in the name of Jesus. Can you say that to yourself? Glory be to the name of the Lord. The Lord also said to me that some people are scared of how will their December be. Because they have nothing now. The Lord said to me, we have said to you beyond this request. Please, I want you to claim this word to some. When the Lord is saying, I've said to you, it's not only for money. Some is for material things. To some, it's all about your marriage. To some, you have been turning down for your success in school. It's going to settle such people. So, anything you need, you can talk to it because God is going to do that for you in the name of Jesus. Because the word of the Lord says in the book of Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says that my reward is with me. Why do I call this scripture? The Lord said to me, to those people that serve me faithfully, they have my reward with them. Oh, your amen is weak. So can you tell somebody, say, I welcome you to your year of a new beginning. Leave your seat and go to that person and say, I welcome you to your year of a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Greet those people, celebrate them, welcome them, love them, say, I welcome you. Say, I welcome you to that year. Hallelujah. 
By the grace of God, we will all enjoy the season of a new beginning. In the name of Jesus, your children will enjoy that season. Your business will enjoy that season. Your life will enjoy that season. I pray today to that family, anointing for that new beginning, receive it in the name of Jesus. To that family, grace for that new beginning, receive it in the name of Jesus. To that individual, I pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord will do best for you this season in the name of Jesus. And to the cross prison center, we enter into our rest in the season of a new beginning. In the name of Jesus, can your amen be loud? Father, thank you this morning for your word that you are going to speak expressly to us. Lord, as we enter into the new beginning, you ask me to tell your church the word you want me to tell them today. Lord, I ask that I submit myself that you accept them. Lord, speak through me today. In Jesus' name we will pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Glory. You may be seated. Tell somebody beside you say you are welcome to your father's house. I can see the glory of the Lord upon your life. And the rest of God will move in you. Can you shout out a amen? Can that amen be more louder? Shout it if you mean it. Say amen. By the grace of God, ladies and gentlemen, I have this topic I want to share with us this morning, which I tie to not by chance. Tell somebody, say, not by chance. Shout it again, say, not by chance. There is one thing for somebody to enter into the scene of a new beginning. And there is another thing for that person to enjoy the season of a new beginning. Every one of us, we call, we call scriptures every day about what we want. About I am blessed, I am free. About I see the glory of the Lord upon me. About I see the right of God upon my life. We quote these scriptures every day. But here it is it has been difficult for a lot of people to enter into the arrest because of what they want to take it by chance, and it's not possible to enter into your new beginning. You must live before the now. A man of now is a man that will not have projection for his future. Before I go ahead, I want to celebrate all the Cross Christian Center and people watching online throughout the world. I want to say that God will bless you in the name of Jesus. But please, I want you to listen to this word. A man of now is a man without the foresight. A man of now is a man that is called Gawori Gawol. No? Like I was at, what is that meaning? As he come, now he go Abi. As we see it, now so we spend them. A man of the now is a man that will be looking for chance at all times, but chance will never come. Not by chance. Tell somebody, say, not by chance. Shout it very loud. There are lots of people that have so many things happen in their life, and they don't even know how to go about it. A man of now. We use the little resources at Israel's disposal to do makeup and wear dresses. A man of the now, we're always looking for how I can go to party every time. We want to buy a shwebi every time. We want people to know that you're always there. A man of the now. Want to call everybody, want to be on the internet at 24-7. Greeting and chat is a man without vision. A man of the now 
is a man without focus. A man of the law is a man without ambition. A man without life. A man that life will soon from it out. A man of now, a woman of now, they want to visit everybody. They want to go everywhere. They want to eat everything. They want to do everything. But you cannot know them with one thing. We have entered into a new year right now. This word will help you to solidify your relationship with God and to live right with God. A man of the now we forget and begin to look for relationship with men. If you understand that you are beyond here, you are beyond the now, you will see something changing in your life. Man that depend on now, they don't train their tummy. Their tummy train their mind. They don't train their legs. Their legs train their mind. They don't train their mouth. Their mouth train their mind. They don't train their eyes. Their eyes train their mind. And so, in the way, they will miss all. My question is this. What do you see after now? Say not by chance. Let's shout it again. Say not by chance. Shout it very loud. Say not by chance. In the journey of blood, there is no space for rigging. No. Your life is not to be politicized. People might rig election, but they cannot rig the life of that person. You have heard about a particular president that they flew in him after the first time in the airport of our country. But in the end, he still died. Because of what? They, they cannot do what they cannot. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 52 verse 16. I want us to read our scriptures together. I'm just laying a foundation for where I'm going. Okay, Isaiah 49 verse 16. Let's read Isaiah 49 verse 16. We're going to get that. Say, Behold, I have grieved thee upon the palm of my hands. Thy war, I what? A continually standing. Before what? A continually before me. The war, your reason. I can tell you when you were born. I can tell you when you are going to marry. I can tell you when you will know more on this side. When you say bye bye. The time you want to lift up your hands and your hands say no I'm weak. The time you want to say something you open your mouth and you will not be able to say it again. Say not by chance. Can somebody shout it again? Can somebody shout it again? Hallelujah. Now my traveling during the week. I was to handle a workshop. During the workshop, I was speaking, and we have some international US, UK, uh, Ghana, Burkina Faso, South Africa, like that. And some of them are in my workshop. And there's something that captured the heart of a South African lady, a minister, a pastor. I said, Pastor, please, after the workshop, I want to have a special section with you. What was that thing that captured my mind? I was to talk about publicity and media in ministry. And I also talk about that. She said, Sir, you mentioned that we have been doing something for four years continuously without breaking. I said, Yes. So, what is that? I said, It's my daily audio broadcast. And she said, you have not missed one day. I said, yes. How many years? For four years. Because of what? I see more than now. I am doing that now by chance. And here it is. God is also blessing me through that. That is church outside church. That 
is Pastor Adeleke outside the Cross Christian Center. My question is this. When anybody see you, what will they know you for? Has somebody asked me? Has somebody answered that question? What will they know you for? What is your brand? This is a question for somebody. I'm a security in my company. They know you as a security man, right? Um, I'm the secretary to a particular company. They know you as a secretary, right? No. I'm the CEO of a particular company. You are know with that, right? But your identity of now, can you carry that identity T 25 years after now? And you will not be worried about that. How many of us can carry that identity? Okay, somebody's waving hands. Please, who is doing that? I want to ask a question. Okay, I can see one person. Who again? 25 years without being weary. Wait, 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 wait. You have the tenacity for what you are doing and you want to continue with it. Who is that person? Then, if you have anybody here for that year, you cannot continue what you are doing. Then what you are doing, change it. It does not worth living. Are you hearing me? You have to see beyond where you are and begin to see yourself in another realm. It does not come by chance. It comes by heart. Somebody see here. For the fact that you have tried something and it does not work out for you and you believe in what you are doing and lo, all you need to do is not to stop is to continue trying. There is no error in starting small. But there is a problem in remaining small. When you remain small, God we are we, we hungry at you because God from the, from the book of Genesis chapter 1, the word of the Lord made us understand that God formed everything and then rested. The work of six days, of donkey years is what we are still enjoying now. There are so many things in the work of six days that we have not seen. If somebody tell you 50 years ago that the work of technology we are enjoying now that is going to come, will you believe that? If they tell Nigerians that you are going to be somewhere and begin to connect throughout the world in your house without be happening. I remember the time we are suffering from cellular. Before a president helped us out. And brought it. Anytime I go to Kotonou at that time. When I was in dealer, dealer business. When I was selling cars. I used their phone. I used their cellular. But in Nigeria we don't have it. We don't have it. And the first set of people that have access to it are the 419. Which people? 419. So they use it to scam people. When they use it to scam, they will be talking to you as if they are talking to you. You are in abroad and they are beside your house. Because of what? They know what you don't know and they can use what you don't know against you. Say, I'm beyond now. Say, I'm not on this air by chance. Somebody is not saying it. I'm on this air for a purpose. For our new year, I want to challenge the mind of everyone here. If you have been working in your organization for years and you don't have your own organization that you can call yours, little, little things to come in, then there is something wrong. One of my daughters in the Lord She's working in an organization, as I said to her. I said, daughter, three years ago, we went to a house, maybe three or four years ago. I said, I see God changing your work. Your work, you might not do well in the place you are. They are paying her well. Okay? They are paying her very well. Somebody receiving like 0.2 million and, a head and above in Nigeria, you know, it's money. But I said, don't retire to that. One day, I told her, anytime I see her, like next year, Last year, I told her, I said to her, don't forget what God is saying he want to do. So the glory of God this year, she come and say, Daddy, I'm starting a business. I say, glory to God. I've gotten an office. I say, glory to God. I've done this because of what you used to tell me. See, he's still working in that organization. I will not mention that place. 
But hear this. She have the mentality for retirement. What did I call it? Can somebody say it? Can you say it again? Say, not by chance. I want to talk about every individual before I start talking about where God is saying, which you also address. Need to look into your life. Am I doing well or am I not? Hear this. Everything you need on earth to become what you need to become is not far from you. Hello? It's not what? All you need to do is to look within. This world, we have come into this world to glorify God in our body, to glorify God in our life, to glorify God in our situation, to glorify God in everything we do, in order of us, for us to become a brand new person. As a servant of God, you don't need to be running after pastors, other pastors like you to give you something. The grace you carry should be able to sustain you. As a professional, you don't need to be running after professionals. There is something you have, they have seen that you have not seen. Petty trader, you don't need to be running after people. There is something they have seen you have not seen. All you need to do is to study them. Do what? Study them. I want you to know the business you are doing today, you are not the only one doing it in your country. Do you believe that? A lot of people are advertising the way you are advertising your business. But what makes different is branding. I remember many years ago in our country, Nigeria, I'm saying that because there are a lot of people watching us that are not of this country. There was a fast food. There is still that fast food, but the glory is gone. That's why I addressed to it as the past tense. They are still living, but they are not existing. They came with package, okay? That package alone turned to their brand. When you see the package, oh, everybody wants to heal that meal. And later we got to know when other people start coming, we begin to know that they are salt or their magi is too much. And you know what happened? Those people that came after them studied them to use them to improve their own capacity. But here it is. Because they are being the household name, they didn't send their delegate to that place to go and take their secret. And they fall. Every life you are living must be on learning. Oh my God, say learning. learning. We are in the realm of prophetic that everybody want to hear the prophecy my, that my pastor will tell me when I come to church. We want to hear the prophetic declaration of what my pastor will say. Oh, we want to hear a couple look at a yakata, kata, 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 every time we come. Hello, you need to go to a particular realm in life that you will live beyond what other men think about you. I said this before. That anyone that does not form you cannot have final say over your life. Hello. Can somebody say, I know me? Say, I don't know you. Can I say it again? Say, I know me. But I don't know you. What does that mean? In other words, you have to prove yourself to me. The little part of that man you know does not mean you know that man. The little of your spouse, you know, does not mean you know your spouse. Many years ago, my wife, we're talking, and she know I'm going to get to that. She started laughing. We're talking, and she said, I know you. I laughed seriously. I laughed. I said, you know me? She said, yes. I said, you don't know me. So I said, I know you. I might know your wife. I've been with you for years. Then you don't know me. I said, can we prove it? She said, yes. I said, what am I thinking now? Is that we don't know what you are thinking. So your thought is you. Do you understand that? Say, we don't know what you are thinking. Then you don't know me. The only one that know me is the one that seated in heaven that control my affairs. Oh my God. 
So next time don't say you know somebody. I will only know what I've heard from you by the time you tell me what to tell me. Do you know what I am telling you with the full package in my heart? Oh, come on. Say not by chance. Are we still in the church today? Why am I saying this? We are entering into our new beginning. New beginning is not meant for cowards. New beginning is not meant for be the wasters of opportunity. New beginning is not the product of people that always say bring, 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 but they don't give. They don't enter into that rest. Don't forget that the world says that the borrower is a slave to the lender. If I am giving to you at all times, I'm wiser than you. Oh my God. I'm what? I'm wiser than you. You're supposed to stop me. You are giving to me every time. What do I have to give to others in return? Then if I insist as the father, oh, I have this leading to give to you, then in your heart you say, oh, I am privileged to have something of my father. I can give to the children the Lord because I'm a father. That is a standard of a father. But if you are a child and somebody of your friend always giving, your friend is always giving, always giving, or even your husband always giving, and you don't have anything to give to your husband in return. Every time when your husband gives to you, your only is thank you. He give again, thank you, you swallow. Thank you. He will be getting why you are lucky. Say not by chance. Is somebody see here? Please, you are going to give me the chance to pour out my heart. God says again, say, not by chance. Here it is. Hannah don't get, didn't get that child by chance. She got the child by leaving behind what was the past. They used to go to Shiloh and eat at a particular spot. As she said to herself, and be eaten without any good package. Hey, my second wife came here with package, and I will still go this way. Say, no, this year I will not eat. She went to the place of the altar and summoned the presence of God on that altar. And said, Keep all my two casa, Dimploni my Reboska. I see some people calling Moso Teploni and the Hatalika de Boscaria. I see Capulum to Cabo Sandal Hedea. I see somebody today that you summon the presence of God and it will work for you. Amen. When you come to the presence of God, don't wait for the prophecy that your pastor will give. Say, I'm a prophetic man made that God has made for me. I hear this. You are somebody that people are supposed to honor. You're already made. Man made are not the one in the river. Do you hear me very well? God has made you as a man. And before you get to know, there is something about you. Can you see what you carry? Do you understand that you are beyond now? Do you understand that you are beyond people begin to hit you? They put a jar of oil on you and oil is not working. It's because you want to take it by chance. Say, I'm not going to take it by chance. <laughs> Can you shout it very loud and clear? For God to abundantly bless somebody, such person must have gone out of Israel to do something special that will attract the abundance. Must have gone out of your way to do something special. What is that? What is that special thing? That is the question in the heart of people. I don't have money. I roll on the floor for God. Let me share this. I've shared this with our workers. I attended a particular program my father in the Lord Church because it summoned me. All my program that is coming that is different from Sunday service and some other services that you do, you must be there. I said, okay, sir. From the first day we met, that was an agreement. Then, because he wanted all his children in the Lord to learn and to the wise one, they are growing with the learning. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5. Say, so a wise man will hear. 
and they will increase learning. A man of understanding shall do what? Attain unto wise counsel. I hear this beloved. After one of our father and the Lord also finished ministration, he said, anyone that wants to sow seed to his life of the man of God, that minister come out and the rest. And I've sowed seed with the money in my hands. I have nothing left. And I just stood there and the Lord said to me, you have something. He said, I have no money in my pocket. He said, go to that place. Say, anyone that wants to sow seed, he didn't mention money. Then I understand what God was saying. And I started sowing seed of prayer. Right from the altar. Seed of prayer. And at that hour, I didn't know that somebody was calling me. The seed of prayer generates money. Before I got to the church for the workers retreat, another person sent, I saw a lot. I said, well, this is just the seed of this prayer. I am not saying if you have it, you don't give it. I'm going somewhere. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I say glory be to the name of the Lord. David was not only to acknowledge his error and run to God for mercy. He did what other people of his time don't know how to do. Because he was in a deeper realm of intimacy with God. That's what David did. God will not call a man and make you my firstborn. There are three sons of God. Number one was who? Adam. Number two, David, son. And number three, the only begotten son. Three sons of God. Then, he said, I have made you my firstborn. Hey! Because of what? See, because he, 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 he always run into God whenever, whenever he committed error or he give whatever. What do you think it, it does that? We are going there. Part of the major thing and the announcement of God after that came to reality. Because he was in deeper relationship with him. Psalm 132 verses 3 and 4. Psalm 132 verses 3 and 4. We are going to read it together. I'll read to 5. That is very important. Psalm 132. It says, Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house nor go into my bed. Take note of that please. Surely. Can we read this together very loud and clear? Want to go? Surely. Uh -huh. I will not come into the tabernacle of my house nor go into my bed. Verse 4. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelid, verse 5, until I find a place and I find out a place for the Lord, an habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. What does that mean? I will not build, I will not go to my house until when I build a house for God. That in alone, make God to respect him. Say, so, oh my God. I love this guy. Oh, none of the king before him could think about her. A wise man will look at where God can do it. So the blessing of David for being the firstborn was not was not by chance. Because of what he did, hard things that other men don't know. There was a king before him. He never thought of building a house for God. As you are in the presence of the Lord, you are not supposed to be comfortable with the where you are right now, where you are right now, and you are not blown with the necessity or necessary things that you need. Eh? You have to look that, oh, oh, I need something better than here. So I'll be wise. One of the things that made David a celebrated king was because he understands the heartbeat of God. He knows. He was not waiting for any man. He made that decision. In a place where you are the only one who knows what others don't know, and you understand how to effectively make use of what you know, you become the thoughtful. In that means, in that environment, people begin to look for you. 
Because of what? You become a champion. Other people don't know what you know. Hello, the word of the Lord says that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. In the covenant of God, you have a Psalm 25 verse 14. In the covenant of God, you have all. He will keep his secret with you. How does translation say that God will confide in you? Hey! To confide in somebody is to keep his secret with you. I know when you have this with you, his stand is permanently stay without any intruder. He tap into that secret. Anytime I sin, I go to him, Lord, have mercy on me. Anytime I want to do something, God, can I go? But he said, no, far from that now. I think I'm going to do something special that nobody have done before they start tapping into it. I'm going to build a house for God. That, hello, make God and some other things to tell him, oh, you are my firstborn. I'll embrace you above the king. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know what? And God also made Jesus to come from that lineage of Jesse. To David. There's something so important in the book of Revelation chapter 22 verse 16. Revelation chapter 22 verse 16. The only time that Jesus will call himself Jesus. Oh my God. It says, Hi Jesus. Can we read it together very loud and clear? One to go. Hi Jesus. I've sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offering of David. And the bright and morning star. Do you see connection between Jesus and David? Because of what? He built, he, he, he have it in his heart to build out for Jesus. And because of that, oh, I am not going to retire until when I make this happen. And God said, no way. I'm not going to make Jesus to come from elsewhere. But I must link him to Jesus. And Jesus called himself Jesus for the first time. When he wanted to get feedback from his disciples, he said to them, Who do people say I have? And one said, Elisha. One said this. One said that. They called him different names. But he looked as somebody. Peter, I know you're always understanding me. You, what do you think I am? And Peter said, Thou art what? And he said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. Until when we retire from flesh and blood, we will not please God. Whenever flesh and blood take totality of any man, it will be very difficult for that man to rise in life. Flesh and blood is of the sinful nature. So no way. Jesus made us to understand in that place. You must live beyond flesh and what? Say no, it's not the flesh you carry. It's not the blood in your bloodstream that revealed this to you. But there is deeper things that have revealed this to you. And from there he said, no, because you know above other apostles, sir, I will build my church upon you and the gate of hell shall not prevail. Because you know what other apostles don't know. Oh, have made you the head of the apostles. I have given you something that they don't have. I'm making you the leader and the head. Oh my God. Through you, churches will be established. You don't know yours. Until when you grow beyond flesh and blood and you go grow beyond, I don't have therapy. Then you get it. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 says, I returned, I saw under the sun that the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, neither yet bread for the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happened to them all. David was able to live beyond chance. 
but he lives by heart. Say, so all this one, the Ecclesiastes said, is chance to happen. But David was not a man of chance. He was a man of act. He was not only about going to church without his involvement. He does not only take to correction when he's rebuked by God. He does not only take directive from the Lord before he does sign anything. He does not only pray, dance, praise. His heart was not only about going to the battlefield. He was about what more can I do for you, Lord? You can also ask yourself to the Lord, what more? He will provide for you more. You have given to God and you are thinking that is a hand. You ask him, what more? What more? Here it is. Joseph was also a man of what more? That was the reason why the people in the land of his captivity, where they sold him to, when he became the prime minister, here it is, the first cloth was taken away from him to his brother. The second cloth was taken away from him to Potiphar's wife. And the third cloth was taken away from him to his king. And he became a great man. Here it is, there are a lot of series of cloth that might have been taken away from you. Oh my God! You might not have what it takes to become what you need to become now. Oh my God, there is something awaits you. Only if you can hold on and step. If you can do like him, I will not because of what I see in the palace and neglected my God. I didn't see myself sleeping with a woman before I married. I didn't see myself gone out of the will of God. I see myself becoming what God says I have. Can somebody shout, I receive grace? Can somebody shout, I receive grace? A man of what more we see beyond the people. What more can I do for you, Lord, beyond becoming a Christian without your contribution in the kingdom? A lot of people are comfortable with their offering. A lot of people are comfortable with their tithe. A lot of people are comfortable with their first fruit. But they are not somebody of what more. Men of what more don't lack God provision. Put it down. Men of what more don't lack God greater things. They don't retire to their tithe alone. They don't retire to their offering alone. They don't return to their first fruit alone. They invest into the God's kingdom. Your investment can't. Now by the grace of God, we are planning for our own property by the grace of God. What is your own involvement? What have you done? Is that a contribution of the token you put in your natural group that can't? No. You must go beyond every other one. You must write a check that you say, ha, ah, this is big. You must look at yourself and say, no, oh, I want to give the overall of what the whole group have given. You must look at yourself and say, no, oh, what more can I give, Lord? I hear this. A man of what more will never lack God's provision. Write it down. There's no way. David was a man of what more? Lord, what more can I do for you? Not by chance, but by heart. He makes sure that his action produced for him greater things. Oh my God. Your best is not enough when there is still more to do for the, for the kingdom of God. When you say, I've given my best. Oh, I've given my best. And you know there are still more to do for the kingdom of God. Your best is not enough. Hear this. Men of what more grow more. Put it down. Men of what more achieve more. Men of what more gather more wealth. Men of what more, more watch more increase in knowledge. Men of what more are blessed of their time. 
Men of what's more are known to be the champion. Men of what more are the men of one thing. Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Say, brethren, I can't not myself to apprehend it. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. What you have done in the past. I've given 10 billion to God is in the past. I've done this to God is in the past. Say, so forgetting us in Philippians chapter 3 verse 14 and 13. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. And he says something in verse 14. Say, I press towards the mark of the price of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press for. I press for. I just want to see the things of God blossoming. I just want to see the right of God establishing. I just want to see the kingdom of God expanding. Hello. A lot of people will come to church. Man of what more don't come to church without churching. Do you hear that? I've said this before. Fainter, a fainter pen is better than clever brain. Do you understand that? When you write it and it's faint, it's better than clever brain. You can get to it any time, any year and see it working. So when you come to church, what more will I come with? I'm with my Bible, then come with your writing pad. As you are jotting, something is coming into your memory. Don't be somebody that will be limited to come to church and come and showcase your corner. Come into church and come and showcase your hairdo. Come into church and come and showcase your shoe. Come into church and come and showcase your facade. Come into church and come and showcase your path. That does not count. It's the thing of the flesh and what? And blood. And God said those things cannot inherit his kingdom. When you get to your house, you go into what you are penciled down and look into it and say, this is speaking to me. Glory be to the name of the Lord. What did I do is a word of hope and inspiration to those who understand it. People of one thing believe in seed sowing and harvest. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Genesis 8 verse 22 says, why the head remain it? See time will not cease. Harvest will not cease. Cold, heat will not cease. Summer, winter will not cease. Day, night will not cease. The first thing that God mentioned in that place, the scripture mentioned was what? Seed. And what? Harvest. When you plant, the root will go downward. And what will happen? The fruit will come up. It's a secret. It's a year of a new beginning. What do you want to do for God that is beyond what you have done before? We need to understand this. What do you want to give to God that will be beyond what you have given before? If the Lord has not stopped providing and keeping to his promises, you must not stop in, you must not stop to invest into his kingdom. Because the Lord's blessing does not come by chance, but by heart. Principle is given to us in the book of Genesis chapter 8. If everything you have is for you, your family members and your friends are not for God, hello, they will wither away. We need to understand how to tap into the realm of God. We need to understand how to give. David said, I will not sleep. I will not go into my house until when I have gotten a place for God. And when God saw his heart, God didn't see the building. He saw his heart. And the Lord said, this is a place to do it. Where does, what does he want to put in that place? The hack. Ministry are in different phases. We are in the third phase of the ministry as a priest. The first ministry was the ministry of the priest. Where they will have the showbread. 
They will have the candle. They will have everything. They take it to the altar and they sprinkle blood around. There was another one, the second phase of ministry, where the Ark of Covenant is only the thing you can see on the altar with a curtain. Under the Holy of Holies. And the third one is a ministry that we obtain through the birth, the rebirth of first Adam, which is Jesus. I said to us, the secret in that place happened to be the Ark. I hear this, by the time he said it is finished, the first thing that happened, the clutch tore from top to bottom. I said, there is no other secret. All of you are now given the grace of the prophet. This is the reason you can see somebody that will operate a fivefold ministry of the prince, of the prophet, of all of the... That was the grace that David carried. David can minister in three dimensions. When we talk about the priest is there, the prophet is there, and the king is there. God so endowed him with everything of his personality. For David to know everything about God. Hello! Your investment in yourself without the kingdom of God is nothing. Have you heard about people that came to this world before you? The only thing men will tell you after your death is to a life well spent. Well, what would the heaven say? We wrote a lot when my father dies, 1983 or 87. 1987. We wrote a lot. Let me die the death of a righteous man so my hand can be like him. Everybody started talking. It was. It was. It was. Then what is your work? But his work is still speaking in our town. One day I'm going to play the ministration I ministered there some years back. So you will understand that even as he has been taken off, he's still speaking. Because the works of his hand do what? Speaks. Man, that you do something for, we tell you, oh, you do well. But what is the heaven saying about you? Many years ago, in the first place where we stationed our ministry, some years back, a man was ministering before I was going to the church then, and I wind down my glass to listen to him say, Man, that you help, they will only tell you thank you, but they cannot stand to defend you in danger. He said, but if you do it for God, God will stand by you, not only defend you. He will not allow the danger to come. Even when he permits the danger to come, he wants to train your mind for you to live above it. And whenever you are doing something to God, don't do it because I'm giving 10 naira. I want to get 20 naira. That is not him, him, him. I'm giving 50, I want to get 200. No. You can see the length any man can go with you is to, def to defraud you. To do what? By the time they do it, they pack their kaya. What do they do? Do you know their trace? No. They go with billions of dollars. When they convert it, you use this one to help this one. When you use this one to help this one, this one use it to help this one and help this one. It's, it's, a good, it's a good connecting thing. But here it is. The only assessment you have is in Christ. So, the blessing of the Lord don't come by chance. It comes through heart. Say not by chance. David was a man that always seeking for one thing more to do. Was a man of one thing. One thing I desire. One thing that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I desire. That I may be in the presence of the Lord. One thing I desire. Is to be this. No wonder the Lord knows the heart of David. 
He said to Samuel, For how long will you mourn in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1? For how long will you mourn for Saul? I've rejected him. For any over Israel, feed thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. Oh my God. I know what? His son. It's because David decided to make a place for fellowship for God. Even without becoming a king, he's already prepared for God. And First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 4 says, First Chronicles 28 verse 4 says, How be it, the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my fathers to be the king over Israel forever. You know, even when he died, his kingdom still ruled. Jesus came from his dream and he reigned forever. Not only Israel, but over Nigeria. Not only Nigeria, but throughout the world. Because of what? Jesus saw seed that the generation benefited from. After now, you don't need to be forced to give to God. Say, God chose me above everyone in my father's house. In my kindred, but he have chosen Judah to be the ruler. And of the house of Judah, he said, go to the house of Jesse. And make the Judah to be the ruler. From the house of Judah, of the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he likes me to make me king over all Israel. God can choose somebody from a family and make him to be the leader of that family. It does not matter whom you have. He was a man that was not called into that meeting. But the meeting was meant for him. If somebody see here, say not by chance. He was not called in the morning. By the time they retire, they say, Oh, a great prophet, national prophet is coming to our house today. And they say, call all his children, but my name is David. So we know you know how to take care of the flocks. Whatsoever good you know how to do, don't stop doing it. As at that time, he was training his hand. As when he was training his hand, he was training his mind. As he was training his mind, he was training his feet. As when he was training his feet, he was training his future. He looked into the future and see beyond here. Oh my God. Until when you see beyond where you are sitting, you cannot get beyond that place. There are lots of people that have had every of their resources right from where they are sitting. And by the time they get to the future where they're supposed to get to nothing to meet again because they have eaten it all. Say not by chance. A man of one thing. Say a man of one thing. That I am. Shout out a hammer. Come shout out a hammer. So there is something about God for you. Whatsoever you see today is the best that God wants to see in your life. So don't look at yourself. Don't look down on yourself and say, I can't get it. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. There is something that is still meant for you. The word of the Lord says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to 12. Part of our word for this new beginning. Say, but as it is written, Eyes hath not seen, nor he heard, neither has entered into the heart of men the thing which God has prepared to them that love him. I hear this verse 10. Can we read verse 10 together? Very loud, son of clear. One to go. But God has revealed them unto us by the Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Save the spirit which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. But the spirit of God. Can we read 12 together very loud and clear? One to go. We have received not the spirit of the world. But the spirit of her. Go ahead. Can somebody say, I receive the spirit of God? Not the spirit of the world. Can you shout it again? 
Can you shout it again? Can't be outstanding. Do you have anybody in the house? Are you are saying I've decided to do more than what I think or people think about me? I'm now a man that will live by heart, not by chance. I'm a man of what more will I do for God? I want to become that. Please, can you come forward? I want to pray with you.